and welcome to the academy with another lecture on electricity and magnetism in my previous lecture we were discussing magnetization curves and saturation and we looked at the curve between the magnetic flux density and the magnetic field intensity where we saw that the bh curve exhibits a phenomena known as saturation and this saturation occurs because the relative permeability is not constant as a function of the magnetic field intensity and we also saw this with a typical bh curve of steel in today's lecture we will be solving an example where we are given the mean path length of the core as well as the cross section we are given the number of turns wrapped on the core and we are asked to find out the current which is required to produce a flux of 0.012 webers and we will also find out the relative permeability of the material at that magnetic flux density and for that we are given this bh curve and finally we are also interested in finding the reluctance of the magnetic material so we'll start off by this well known relation that the flux is equal to the magnetic flux density times the cross section area we know the flux is given as 0.012 webers so if i divide it by the area so i will convert the area from centimeter square to meter square and this will give me the flux as 0.8 tesla so now i have an operating point for my magnetic material so it is operating at a magnetic flux density of 0.8 tesla so the magnetic material is operating at a flux density of 0.8 tesla which will occur somewhere here and corresponding to that flux density i want to find out the magnetic field intensity h so from this curve i get the value of h as 200 kilo ampere turns per meter i know that the magnetomotive force f is given as ni and this is equal to the magnetic field intensity times the mean path length of the core so i have 200 turns and we are interested in finding out the current the magnetic field intensity i just found out as 200 200 kilo ampere turns per meter so it's always good to put in the units as well so ampere turns per meter times the mean path length which is 0.55 meter and this is also 200 turns so i can cancel out these and from here the current that i need to establish a flux of 0.012 webers comes out to be 550 amperes so this is the solution of the first part of the problem so let's proceed to part b which asks us to calculate the value of the relative permeability required to produce 
a flux of 0.012 Weber's in the core. For this, we will start off with the well-known relation B is equal to mu times H. And from here, I can calculate the permeability as 0.8 Tesla divided by the magnetic field intensity, which I calculated as 200 kilo ampere turns per meter. And this comes out as 4 into 10 raised to the power minus 6. Now mu itself is equal to the product of mu naught times mu r. And this product is equal to 4 into 10 raised to the power minus 6. So this is dimensionless. And we know that the permeability of air is given by 4 pi into 10 raised to the power minus 7. So this comes out as 3.18. So it comes out to be an inefficient magnetic material, not so conducive for producing magnetic flux as it has a permeability of only 3.18 times the permeability of air. Next we proceed to the last part which asks us to compute the reluctance of this material. For this we use the analogy with electric circuits where we know that the magnetomotive force is the equivalent of voltage, the equivalent of resistance is a reluctance in a magnetic circuit and the equivalent of current is the magnetic flux. So flux is given as the magnetomotive force which is equal to n times i so this divided by the reluctance is equal to the magnetic flux. And since we want to find out the reluctance, we can divide the magnetomotive force by the magnetic flux. And this we know that the number of turns are 200. We found out the current as 550 amperes divided by the flux which is 0.012 Weber's. When I do the algebra I get the reluctance as 9166 into 10 raised to the power 3 ampere turns per Weber. Or in other words this magnetic circuit offers a very high reluctance to the magnetic flux. Therefore, even at such a high current of 550 amperes, we are only getting a flux of around 0.012 Weber. So that's it for today's lecture. We'll continue our lecture series on electricity and magnetism and many other courses that I have on my channel. So feel free to take a look and I'll see you again in another lecture. Take care. Bye.